welcome everyone. Welcome to Focus on EDU. And uh, thank you for tuning in today and checking us out. Uh, my name is Brian Krause from CDW Education. And I have the opportunity to host today. Our regular host is taking a little break, but I wanted to thank Doug Konopelko, the National Esports Manager for CDW for helping us out with all the tech and uh, getting us going. Uh, today, we're very excited. We have a, a great guest today that's going to talk about assistive technology in education. And it is my honor today to introduce Dr. Laura Hess, who is the Executive Director of Special Education for the St. Vrain Valley School District in Colorado. And uh, I've had the opportunity to work with Dr. Hess over the last seven years, I guess. And she is one of the most passionate and caring uh, professionals that I know for all students, and we're very excited to have her on the, the show today. So thank you and welcome Dr. Hess. Thank you, Brian. It's great to be here. Um, I'm excited to talk about our topic today. I just wanted to give a little bit of my background. I've been in special education for approximately 20 years, and about half of that um, has been in administration, and so across different states. And I um, assistive technology and just seeing how it's transformed lives is something I'm passionate about on behalf of my students that I serve. And I'm really excited to be here. So thank you. Great. Thank you. So we'd like to jump right in. Um, let's, Laura, if we could talk about how assistive technology can be helpful in the school environment. So for me, I see... Um, you know, I think back to when I was in high school, and this probably dates myself, where we went to computer labs, and we had to go to the technology. Um, all the way fast forward to when I became a teacher, you know, the dot cam cams were the big thing. And again, um, students who needed anything outside of that traditional pen and paper environment had to leave the environment um, in general education to be able to access those things. Now, fast forward to when I have this opportunity to lead in this space, and there are a lot of districts across the U.S., and especially mine, which is a one-to-one -one district, so all of our students have access to technology. Students don't need to leave the classroom to access that next step of um, or some support that they may need. They get to stay there, and I think that's probably how I've seen technology transform classrooms over time um, through that disability lens. You, you talked a little bit about how your district is a one-to-one. -one. Um, I guess, how has that benefited the, um, the students that you work with? So for my students, um, I think back when, you know, we weren't one-to-one -one and they might have been the only students in the classroom with a piece of technology to help them communicate, help them access different things. Now everybody's one-to-one. -one. It's not making them feel different. Um, they can put their earbuds in and access accommodations and embedded modifications into lessons right there in the classroom in real time. Um, peers don't have to know what they're accessing or that it looks any different mm -hmm. than what they're able to do. And then I go to the other extreme with our students that are more impacted that use technology and that one-to-one -one device to communicate. And how amazing is it that they can communicate in that general education environment with other students just because of that one piece of technology that changed the outlook of that child's ability to be a part of their classroom. Nice. What would you say has been the biggest impact? I think the biggest impact is, is really that inclusive piece. Um, you know, teachers can struggle to think about how to reach different students based on their needs. And technology makes that so much easier. It is accessible. Um, it has embedded opportunities for students. So, you know, I can turn on my um, computer. I can go straight to the um, accommodations and it will read things to me if I don't want to um, read them myself. And so all of those impacts just make a difference for students to live in a more equitable system. And then it really demonstrates a student's abilities. So the word disability has a negative connotation with dis ahead of it. And we talk about what a student can do. And technology allows students to be able to do things versus focusing on what they can't do. Nice. 
What do you, um, kind of the, ne the next question, what do you think the assist assistive technology can lead to? And maybe both at the individual level and then um, in your role as a kind of as a district, what do you, how do you see, I guess, assistive technology um, leading education now? I think assistive technology opens the doors for people to think outside the box on what people can contribute. Um, you know, you think about many years ago where people with disabilities were sent to different schools. They weren't in the public school system. Um, and right now, those that use the most assistive technology are inside of our school systems, inside of public schools. And we get this really amazing opportunity to learn about those students' gifts. Um, and they have different ways to share it and technology is allowing for those different ways to share it. I get to see students who um, their assistive technology allows them to communicate with their fourth grade peer in a way that maybe they would have sat separate in a classroom all day long um, without being a part of that general education environment. And that's a two way street. We're creating empathy by allowing um, students of different abilities to be in classrooms with each other in a way that, and interacting with each other in a way that maybe um, it wasn't happening 20 years ago. And when I can think about what my school um, opportunities were like when I first went into teaching for my students, um, and even back to when I was in education, um, going through a high school system, and technologies really allowed us to get there quicker than ever before to be able to see what gifts our students can share through that assistive technology lens. Nice. What do you what do you think parent how do you think parents view assistive technology? I think parents view assistive technology as something um, that can be hard to learn. You know, when your student student needs um, a device to do anything it's a little bit of that gap, right? So what we've done is really create opportunities for parents to learn about their child's assistive technology so mm -hmm. that it can be used at home for communication skills or at home for accommodations and modifications. And so that the parents really have that clear understanding of their child's assistive tech. We have one person that's in charge of all of our assistive tech in our district, but really what her job is, is to educate classroom teachers and including special ed teachers to then empower parents to be able to do the same thing on behalf of students. And so really thinking about that lens from a parent perspective of making sure that we're also educating them um, so that they can really incorporate that assistive technology device at home because we know the quicker it's adapted at home, the easier it'll be at school. And then really when that happens and it's all on the same page for the student and it makes the most sense and he can, he or she can see that being used in different arenas, that assistive technology device is their gateway to accessing whatever they want to be able to access and be able to communicate outside of the school walls. Well, and that seems to me to really create some partnerships with parents that um, could be really beneficial for not only the student, but the school also. Absolutely. And, you know, we've had parents call us and say, this scares us. And how do we um, figure this out and we just bring them in and we teach them the basics and then they have a line they can, you know, and a person they can connect to with what it looks like at home and how do we continue to help you. And so that's one of the things out of COVID we really recognized is our student, our parents didn't quite know how to use all the pieces of the device. And so yeah. the more that we can educate our parents in that home environment of how to use it, the better off the student's going to be. Nice. What a great partnership. That's awesome. What um, what do you think the biggest gap is in the use of um, assistive technology? I think the biggest gap are just the traditional things that come preloaded onto every device. You know, that speech to text and text to speech can change a child's like overview on writing. So it's not that we want to stop the writing practice or stop the reading practice um, for that independency, but sometimes students with disabilities kind of get to a point where the brain is overloaded. And I would say any of us get there. At some point, we need to give ourselves a little bit of a break. And assistive technology, those embedded features that come with every piece of technology that we get, 
um, allow us to kind of give our brain a rest, but we're also still learning in the process. And so that frustration level that a student might face when they're handwriting, absolutely handwriting is important. And we can use technology to be able to um, help students get over that hump. So when they reach that frustration level, they still are able to complete the work because they're using speech to text. So we have to think about it as layering to support each other rather than one replacing the other. Um, and sometimes it might need to replace the other because the student's not able to write or the student's not able to read, but they still wanna have access to that text. Nice. How do, I guess, how do teachers feel about it and how do they become better at assistive technology? I think, um, you know, teachers learn as they go. I think they need to be introduced to different ways. And so I think we as special educators, um, if we have knowledge of what that looks like in terms for that particular student, it's finding that conversation with the gen ed teacher or that conversation with the teacher that might not know um, what that technology can do. Um, we collaborate a lot across between gen ed and special ed, we have learning technology coaches that know way more about technology than maybe we do. And so what does it look like to get us all in the room and problem solve on behalf of a student's needs? And so that collaboration should look the same as it does when you're lesson planning. Um, but maybe you're really focused on that assistive technology piece in that instance. A lot of the school districts that um, you know we work with may not have an instructional coach or a technology coach what i guess what recommendations would you give for maybe a school district that doesn't have the same level of technology um that uh that same brain enjoys i think i would say find a leader find somebody that's really interested in it and then help grow that person even if you know our best leaders are our classroom teachers I learned the most by walking through classrooms and seeing what they're doing on behalf of students. And then I asked them, what, how did they get there? What happened to, and a lot of the times there's an inspiring story that relates back to a student's needs. Well, I had a student in my classroom that needed that piece so that I just started, decided to do it for all students. And so you really need to think about um, picturing yourself through the lens of a parent or a student with a disability, you know, anybody in a district can do that. Just imagine what that feels like or what that looks like. And what would you want for your own kid in that situation in schools if that was you? And so then you think about, okay, so then how do we bridge that gap and really create a sustainable plan? We start small with anything that we do here. We pilot, we think about it, we come back, we ideate, we talk about it, we use it in different arenas because we know that we, it's not a one size fits all. So we might all have the same piece of technology, but how we use it and what we access and what different apps we wanna to use to be able to reach our students, that just takes a champion in the classroom. And so really from a district leadership, you have to find who those champions are and then grow them. How do, how do teachers become better at using the technology, do you think? I think they get out of their comfort zone. You know. Daily, I try to do something different. I watch my own kid coming up through school in kindergarten and man almighty, are they doing somewhat different things? And she knows how to navigate a computer and WebEx and all of the online supports um, way better sometimes than I do. Um, and definitely better sometimes than my husband does. He's not super technology forward. And so, um, you know, getting out of your comfort zone of, you know, what do I need to learn? And I'm gonna get real humble with myself and recognize that maybe I don't know everything and who can I go to for that learning? As a teacher, it's hard because you stand up in front of a class and you wanna be the expert, but outside of the classroom, we have to recognize that um, we're not always the experts and that our kids have a lot to teach us too. Um, yeah. So most of the time when I walk into a classroom, I'll ask, actually ask a student how to do something and then they'll teach me. <laughs> so that's how most of my learning has been taking place. Nice. Do you have, without any names, do you have any stories about what technology has done? I do. I have one um, that I can think of off the top of my head. You know, it's a little more recent because I was just shared uh, this with our assistive technology coach. We have a student who um, has some more impacted needs and he is starting to use eye gaze in a way that's allowing him to communicate with his peers 
um, at his elementary school and it has just soared. He's able to complete writing assignments. He's able to tell us how he feels in instances he can joke around. Um, and so this really great partnership between the gen ed, the speech path, the parents were a huge piece of this puzzle um, in trying because they also reinforce it at home and support it at home. And it's it's been life changing. And so when you get to see stuff like that, you automatically creates energy to figure out how do I do other things in assistive technology to help our most impacted students be able to communicate. Um, and so we're always investigating new ideas. Um, there's not one piece of technology that we're always stuck to. Um, we're allowing ourselves to think outside the box and how do we get there and what does it look like? Um, one cool thing that we're doing with technology is watching, um, we have some robots in our classrooms um, for our, our students who are more impacted on the autism spectrum and who have not you know, at times communicated in clear sentences or more than one or two utterances who are now speaking in full sentences to the robot um, because that was a safe spot to communicate. And so we have, you know, hundreds of these stories. And I think me as a leader with the other leaders in our district are really passionate about figuring out what technology can do to help access. It's not you know, one feature for one kid, it's really trying to find that individualized pathway so that that child could then be a member of society in any way that they want to. Great. Thank you so much. So our final question, if people wanted to learn more, what are some of the resources or blogs or books or people that you rely on heavily so our listeners could connect with them or track them now? So, in, you know, thinking about resources, I always think your um, Department of Ed at the state level has assistive technology ideas. We go to ours. Um, they have a great wing of assistive technology, and I have found that most state departments have that wing um, offset. And so I would start there. Um, if you're an educator, I think that's a good place to start. We, um, you know, my biggest gift is that I hire well. I hire people who uh, challenge me, most importantly, to think outside the box, um, who want to challenge our students to be better than they were the day before. And so I think um, I Google a lot, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know, I don't think there's a one size fits all. I, I read up, you know, we have a lot more students that are really responding to eye gaze. So right now I'm really entrenched in the research and looking at what can eye gaze do for our students. and. What is the you know brain science behind all of that? And so I think you just have to be open as a leader more than anything is to, to get out there and connect and do some of the research on your own and then talk to parents and talk to um, students and hear teacher voices. And if you continue to do that and have that continuous leadership throughout your embedded work, either as a teacher or as a district administrator, um, then you're going to be better off for students in the future and you'll find these really cool ideas. I think you just have to be open to it more than anything. And um, that's really what I've done. I don't have like a, a trick beyond that. I just try to always envision myself from a kid's perspective. Um, and it keeps me young, I think, and in thought. And uh, I let the kids challenge me. And I think that's been my greatest gift. So that would be my my thing is that I would tell people out there to have the students challenge you in something that and watch it through their eyes. And then you'll be able to get a feel of where you need to go next. Nice. Well, Laura, thank you so much. And uh, thank you on behalf of all the families and the students that you serve. It's an honor to hear from somebody who's so passionate and cares so deeply about, about kids and families. And we just thank you for your time and really appreciate your, your expertise around technology. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can be notified whenever we post new content. Looking forward to seeing you next time.